Hey guys, you wait here. So today I'm going to put together a fall container, but I decided to challenge myself and select only native plants to put in this beautiful pot here. But before I start, I wanted to thank you guys because when I was selecting uh, a pot for this composition, I was having the hardest time. So I was in the store that is called At Home here on the East Coast, and they had so many beautiful pots. I just could not decide which one I wanted. So I took photos and I posted it on Instagram and you guys voted. And this pot was the second runner up. Um, there was another one, it was like whiter and a little bit darker, but this one I liked because it was lighter um, to lighten up the space here. And it also had a small chip. And I went to the manager and I asked if I could get a discount and they gave me 20% discount, which is always a good thing. And this chip, I'm going to fix it today, which is very easy. But this is a fiberglass container. And as you can see, it's big, but it's light. I can lift it with no problem. Um, it is frost proof, waterproof. And if I decide to disassemble this composition, I could just um, put it inside the house and maybe put like a large house plant in here and reuse it for something else. Anyway, let me show you what I have here and I'll get started. All right, so this is what I have for today's project, the pot. Um, and let me show you the chip right there. That will be easily repaired with that paint. Uh, beautiful plants right here. Some gloves. Um, I have some tile that I'm going to set the pot on. Some decorative uh, gourds. And these two pumpkins I grew myself this year. I am so proud of myself. I'm, I only grew two pumpkins and I cannot be happier. <laughs> I forgot to mention that I'm going to put the pot right there in that ground cover. That's what I need the tiles for, to set it on the ground so I can put the pot on top um, so the drainage hole doesn't get clogged because sometimes when you put uh, the pot straight on the ground, the drainage hole gets clogged with roots or soil. But um, this ground cover is pachysandra and in some areas it can be invasive, especially if you live on the edge of the woods, so be careful planting it. We um, inherited this ground cover from our previous owners. It's been here for 17 years. It actually never goes anywhere. It's it's not being aggressive so we decided to leave it but i think i would like to break up this sea of green a little bit with this beautiful pot and some plantings so what i'm going to do i'm just going to put the tiles down place the uh, pot and then start planting All right, so I'm going to spray paint that chip. I'm using this Rust-Oleum uh, satin for outdoor indoor use. Shake it up. Magic, look at that. All right, you guys, I had to pause planting a little bit because I wanted to talk about these plants. 
Now, the centerpiece that I have here is this uh, big blue stem. This one is called Black Hawks. And uh, Brad with Garden Evolution actually sent me a photo of his. And his was so beautiful. It was unreal. It was uh, about two feet wide and they can get up to six to eight feet tall. When I saw one in the nursery, I had to have it. It is just gorgeous. When you put it out in landscape, it makes a huge statement. I also think it makes an amazing substitute for the Penicetum rubrum. That is an annual in most uh, zones. But this one is perennial. This one is native, a win-win. Now this euchre right here is euchre green spice. And I talked about um, this plant in a plant haul video that I did about three weeks ago. So you can uh, definitely check that out. But a wonderful euchre, kind of different than your usual euchre in the garden. This plant right here is a Penstemon digitalis uh, Dakota burgundy. And the burgundy color of the leaves is picking up the burgundy from the big um, blue stem. Now, I am kind of torn right now because I have some plants right here. This is um, Baltonia and I am looking to plant something white behind this uh, big blue stem. So Baltonia is one of the options, but I also have two other options in my garden that I may dig out and plant here because I think they may fit a little bit better. And then in the front, I'm going to talk about this plant that is quite unusual um, and I wanted to show it to you up close. All right, so these are other options that I can dig out and plant behind the big blue stem. The first one is a white wood aster. That is super adorable. I think it's a little too tall though. The second option is the snake root right here, which is truly <laughs> a weed in most circumstances, but I find it adorable. It's a, a great native plant. It's a great pollinator plant. That is actually a solar panel for one of my lights. But um, snake root, there's a beautiful patch right there among the elephant ears. A uh, quick um, fact about snake root. They actually um, were the cause of uh, milk sickness when the settlers arrived and let their um, cows on the pastures. The cows were eating it. And it turns out that this plant um, contains a toxin that actually goes into the milk of herbivores like the cows and the goats. And if a person drinks it, they get sick. So if you have cows or goats, <laughs> definitely do not plant this plant. But if you live in like a semi kind of suburban area like me, no cows, no goats, definitely try it a great late um, season plant pollinator. Also, what I've noticed because native um, herbivores like deer really do not like it. I noticed when I started leaving more in the garden they started avoiding eating my plants. Um, it's uh, purely anecdotal evidence, but the more I have, the fewer damage I have. Um, and I actually have heard other people say the same thing. Here's another great native option. This is Gara. And I'm thinking I'm going to go with this one before the sun sets. And here's the last plant. This is Galtheria and it makes amazing little red berries. And it also is a great co ground cover. You can see the rhizomes right here. It is not super aggressive, but if you want to cover some area with evergreen ground cover with lots of berries, um, this is the plant, but it does not like hot, hot areas. It actually does better in Northern climates. This is hardy to zone three but I'm going to put it at the, edge, at the edge of the container.
All right, you guys, I love how this turned out. It definitely breaks up the green of the pachysandra. Uh, the pot is beautiful. I am so proud of my pumpkins. And all of the plants are natives, uh, which is so great because they're so great for the garden. They're great for pollinators. And um, all of these plants I can leave over the winter except for Gara because it is hardy to zone five. So I am in zone six, which means I can leave uh, plants potted up that are hardy to zone three, which all of these plants are except for Gara. Um, but anyway, I am just so thrilled and thank you guys <laughs> for watching. I hope you learned something new in this video and I will see you in the next one. Thanks, bye. No? I'm not getting it right. Okay. Here on the East Coast. Please. <laughs> I forget. <laughs> hey guys, Yulia here. So, hey guys, Yulia here. So today I'm going to put together, this is like making noise. Much better. Just can't do it. The light is just so freaking gorgeous here. And this one is um, Penstemon Digitalis. Um, I'm so proud of my pumpkins. Here comes a helicopter.